is a decadent twist to a favorite sweet treat. Hi, Sharks. My name is Jeremy Carlson. And I'm Caitlin Carlson. We are here seeking $200,000 for 10% equity of our company, Crispy Cones. Sharks, for years, we've been eating ice cream out of this. Boring. Ice cream is royalty in the dessert kingdom. It deserves to be treated as such. <laughs> and you shouldn't eat a frozen majesty, the queen of sweets out of this crumbly cardboard coffin. Barf. That's why I revolutionized the soft serve cone with crispy cones. Freshly made dough cones grilled rotisserie style, covered in cinnamon sugar and cookie powder. Mm. Finally, a cone fit for a queen. At all of our crispy cones locations, we cook our doughy crispy cones on our specialty grill, fresh to order. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow. And then wow. we powder them to your liking. You then choose a spread like hazelnut chocolate, cookie butter, gourmet soft serve ice cream, a topping of choice, and what sauce to drizzle on top. Oh yeah. Barbara, are you drooling yet? I'm drooling. So Sharks, <laughs> who's ready to give ice cream the proper throne it deserves with Crispy, Crispy Cones? I am. <laughs> when can we start? Right Dig now. In. Take it. Sharks, so you have a full Crispy Cone with a spread on the inside and then ice cream. And then the cone next to it should be a warm cone oh with a spread gosh, on the inside. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Wow. So it's almost a donut. We don't mark it as a donut and it's not fried. It's not fried? It's not fried. not fried. It's not fried. We put it on those dowels right there on the grill and then they grill with heat, rotisserie style, caramelizing the sugar. Look at this delicious. I know, we made that <laughs> just special for you, Barbara. <laughs> so we know it's good, it looks good, it tastes good, it feels good, it's creamy, it's yeah. smooth, it's tasty. <laughs> but how tasty is the business? The business is super tasty, just like that cone. I started this company on the side of the road in a tent. I had no money, I was a freshman at college. The first year we made $21,000. How long ago was this? So this was in 2018 and we were only open four months. The second year, I designed a trailer in China and got it shipped here and we made, or we grossed $70,000 $70, that second year. Out of a trailer? Out of a trailer in just five month period. And then the third year was COVID year. We were devastated, school was out, colleges went out but we grossed $80,000 that year. Out of the same trailer. Out of yeah. the same trailer in the same small town. And then in 2021, we grossed $207,000. And then this year, we're projected to have half a million dollars. Out of a wow. trailer. So we ended up selling that trailer because we grew out of it. We had an opportunity to open up a storefront in Logan, Utah. And then we had an opportunity to open up a storefront in Rexburg, Idaho this year. So now we have two full-time storefronts. Why would you do that when things are going so well with the low overhead? We basically just grew out of the trailer and we knew that if we wanted to scale this business, that we couldn't do what we wanted to do in the trailer. I'm just curious, we don't know what one costs. So it costs us to make $1.50 roughly to $1.89. Then we sell it for $7.59. Well, that's it's expensive. roughly a 308% markup. Yeah, but it seems worth it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's gourmet, it it's high quality it ingredients. How did you come up with this idea? Yeah, so I actually served a mission for my church for two years in the Czech Republic, and they would make these pastry type things on the side of the road, and I was fascinated by it. And by wow. the end of my two years, I literally had a dream in the middle of the night of me making these in the US. So I brought it back and I learned in my aunt's kitchen. I figured out the recipe. I flew back to the Czech Republic to perfect it. Did Were you they see them the cooking it on a rotisserie or did you come up with that? Um, they hand make them in the Czech Republic. They put them over coal. So it takes so much longer and you can't do that inside a storefront. And Caitlin, what's your story? So I was Jeremy's employee. He hired me in 2019. <laughs> I married my employee. Wow. <laughs> I have a background in photography, I do wedding photography and um, social media marketing and stuff. So he reached out to me just on Instagram. We didn't know each other and asked if I would help him um, run the Instagram. So you slid wow. into her DM. You married your stalker. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, it's been the best. Like we're so in love, and it's been like the biggest <laughs> blessing to like grow this business together. Okay, so now you're a retail business, right? Yeah. Tell us about each location. How many square feet? and what are the sales per location? Yeah, so the first storefront that we opened was in Logan, Utah. It's 1,400 square feet. 
We were able to open it with a budget, including equipment, $90,000 for build-out and equipment. And then we opened up the storefront in Rexburg, which is 1,600 square feet, and um, it cost us about roughly $150,000. And what are the sales for the first store? So Logan, Utah just barely hit um, a year mark in August 27th, and they did $298,000 gross. And did you make money on that store? We did not, and that is industry standard, especially in the food industry. Right. I'm assuming you're gonna to wanna to franchise this one day so that right. if I, as a franchisee, wanna buy it, I'd like to make, you know, 50 to 80,000 a year right. costs. So what, what does the store have to produce for me to make that? So roughly $300,000, and we have a list of 11 people who are opening up 11 different stores in a year and a half. You already have the franchisees. Yeah. The franchisees we've interviewed, we've done our due diligence for the past five months with them, and. Today, our first franchisee is signing their first agreement. In Arizona, it's gonna be three stores in a year How and a half. How much do they rent. pay you to get the franchisee? First store is $30,000. The next two are $25,000. We have nailed the product. I, I know the importance of nailing it and then scaling it and not going yeah, too fast. but you don't fast. have the numbers yet to sell it to. You said you had 298,000 was your production and you said you needed to have a store roughly make $300,000 to make any money. Right. So what happened there? We paid roughly $51,000 in attorney fees just to become a franchise company. So you haven't really proven it out, so where have you raised your money? Who's put money into this so far? I, I drove Lyft and Uber, and I grinded so much to kind of pay for those things, as well as we were able to pull out an SBA loan, and then we do have a line of credit open. So how large is that line of credit? It's $190,000. Look, um, you're not in the ice cream business anymore. Mm. You're in the franchise business. Correct. And that's a completely different set of responsibilities. It's requiring training and understanding that, managing people, dealing with the expectations of franchisees. And so I don't think you have enough experience yet to get into franchising. I think you're too early to do that, that you still should develop and grow organically with your own stores. So for those reasons, I'm out. Look, really impressive what you've done. For me, you're moving too quickly. When you take a franchisee's money, it's a commitment to them yep. and makes me nervous without having a proven model on the store. I mean, you might get there, but it's not for me. I'm out. Thank you so much. Guys, guys I, I love the business a lot while it was in the truck. I, I thought, you know, 400, 500 square feet and this non-proprietary donut cone, which anybody can do themselves, means you have to run like crazy with this. Somebody like Barbara is gonna come and say, I can do this and I can do it in a much faster, better way. So uh, I loved it the way it started, in your dream. <laughs> you're, you're in a truck, but anyways, <laughs> I'm out. Thank you Listen, so much. Listen, it's insanely delicious. It is better to me than any donut or croissant or anything that I've ever had, actually. I think you've done an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. I personally think the franchise model is not the way to go with this. For that reason, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Right, so one shark left. Uh, Barbara, there are some other things that we are doing with our company differently, where we create a hype as well as scaling. Every week, we drop a new specialty flavor that's homemade in our store, like French toast, blackberry, huckleberry, and people go crazy over it. We have people it's waiting at the doors. Something that Cousins Main Lobster does very effectively all right, the time. Right, right. All right, I'm very interested in this business, and I am the person that knows more about franchise and totally. food than yeah. anybody here. All right, I'm gonna make you an offer. I am the person that knows more about franchise and totally. food than yeah. anybody here. All right, I'm gonna make you an offer. I'd like 20% for the 200,000, and I should really charge you 50%, if the truth be known, because I know so much about it. I know the pitfalls, I know the organizational systems, I know the attorneys, I know it all. Would you go $200,000 for 15%? Oh, definitely not, I'm giving you a great deal. <sighs> you know, it should be painful, it should be. Both sides feel they're not getting a great deal. She wants more, she said 50%, and you're howling at the moon at 20. This should be a great partnership. As Kevin often says, all roads lead back to Barbara. That never happens. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a dead end. Oh my God. Barbara, would you do $200,000 
for 17%. Now, what's the difference of 3%? I've just worked so hard for this and... Listen, I bought 30% of Cousins Maine Lobster business. It was my idea to franchise it. I was the one who told them they could make much more of a profit on a truck than they could on a restaurant. Experience is the one thing you guys don't have. That's yeah. correct. Three percent is nothing if you're going to be fact, successful. In fact, if I sit here another minute, I'm going to have to. Barbara, we'll take your offer. Okay. <laughs> Good job, guys. Wow. Yeah. You go, Barbara. I've been you this whole time. Thank you so much. My pleasure. We're excited. Can I give you a hug? Young guy like I've been watching you for so many years. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was 12 when I started watching all of you, so all of you have been idols to me. Barbara's been the main idol, though. Oh, you're so <laughs> <f> <laughs> like, I can't even believe it. We just made it with Barbara. Oh my gosh. That's exactly who we wanted. That's what we came for. She's such an amazing person, um, human, and she'll be perfect for our company. Yeah. We just know it. We're excited. We're super excited. Yay.